Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. The comments are shameful and cringeworthy. The words are disgusting, devastating, and embarrassing. It's the kind of locker room and frat house talk that personally infuriates me. But guess what? I still, without a doubt, support Donald Trump. Look, you've got two options. A guy who admits he has a past who spent his life building an empire in the rough and tumble world of real estate, entertainment, and television, both for and with his family, whose life direction wasn't about angling to get to the White House, or a double-talking woman who hides the truth, lies about virtually everything, can't figure out what she did with six billion State Department dollars, and when confronted with the unassailable truth, arrogantly responds, don't believe your lying eyes. And by the way, is anybody really so stunned that a flamboyant billionaire who owns casinos and all the world that goes with it is capable of speaking the way Donald did 11 years ago? He apologized immediately. To some, it wasn't enough. All right. I told you last week that this election is between someone who's politically incorrect and someone who is politically corrupt. And I said there is a difference between words and actions. Trump's words are horrific, but Hillary's actions have put our national security and our country in jeopardy. Her State Department policy and decisions on the Middle East created the vacuum allowing ISIS to become the world's most feared terrorist organization. Her lack of action and refusal to provide the necessary security in Benghazi allowed for the murder of an ambassador and three heroic Americans. Now let me put this one in perspective for you. Are you happy with the way things are? Or are you one of the 72% in this country who believe that we're going in the wrong direction, that the country is in decline and that we're in desperate need of change? In the meantime, America's a mess. Jobs and the economy in shambles. ISIS reaching our shores. Police being demeaned and targeted for murder. And immigration out of control. Border patrol at the wit's end. Over 10,000 Syrian refugees brought here already. 10,000, that's a small town. We're putting our children in debt so we can take care of these individuals. Even Bill Clinton is tired of the con. You've got this crazy system where all of a sudden 25 million more people have health care and then the people are out there busting it sometimes 60 hours a week wind up with their premiums doubled and their coverage cut in half. It's the craziest thing in the world. If that rings true and you want change, Hillary's not your candidate. Hillary is simply more the same. She looks down on Americans as low lives, basket of deplorables, irredeemable. And now we know she says one thing publicly and another privately. A woman who 11 years ago called African-American kids super predators and the women her husband victimized trailer trash and looney tunes. To those establishment Republicans, by the way, who are looking to jump ship and dump Trump, you tell me. What have you done to combat offensive locker room talk, the very stuff our kids listen to in music day in and day out? What have you done for women who are victims of sexual assault? What did you do when Bill Clinton's semen was found on an intern's dress? And why haven't you decried Hillary's destroying a 12-year-old and getting a pedophile released, laughing that he beat a lie detector and claiming that this sixth grader who's in a coma for five days from rape was asking for it by alleging she sought the company of men like a rapist. And to those Republicans who feign such concern about speech, where were you when Hillary Clinton refused to designate Boko Haram as a terrorist organization against the wishes of the CIA and the FBI? Many, of course, believe because of the tens of millions of dollars that her Nigerian friend gave the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative. Where were you? when the Yazidi Christian women and young girls were jumping off the Sinjar mountain or tried to kill themselves because they were being raped by ISIS, spawned during her watch. And even Colin Powell in his emails predicts that if Hillary Clinton gets back into the White House, Bill Clinton will be up to his old tricks, quote, D, and I can't say the word, ing around with bimbos. And that means engaging in sexual activity. The establishment wants to pull back its support so that they continue to do what they've been doing for the last decade. And that means we, the American public, lose. We now know she says one thing publicly and another privately. She wants to put Wall Street in charge of affirming Wall Street. But pulling back support for the Republican nominee, the establishment weakens the party, 
continues to disenfranchise us. Look, he's the nominee. If you want more of the same from the last eight years, then you go right ahead and trash Donald Trump and you go with Hillary. But folks, the stakes are too high. This is a war about our future. So how does Donald Trump turn this thing around? He's got to convince people tonight that he's sincere in his apology and then move on to prosecute that woman and tell us how he's going to fix the economy and how he'll keep Americans safe. Folks, this is a guy who honestly doesn't need any of this. He's got a job, a family, and a fortune. He doesn't need to do this. But Hillary Clinton needs this job because it's what she's been angling for most of her life. So if you want a woman who's not in it for us and believes in open border, open trade, double street speak, destroys women, then you go right ahead and you vote for Hillary. You'll get exactly what you deserve. And for those of you who want something different from the last eight years, who want real change, buck up, put on your big boy pants and keep on riding. It's decision time. You've got 30 days. And that's my open.